Energy hungry Indonesia is turning to nuclear energy. We must use nuclear power plant in this country. Nuclear energy is in fact the most intelligent way to get electricity. It's the prestige that it brings when it operates to the, the government. But will the prestige of going nuclear play down the perils? Nuclear is in inherently dangerous, especially in the ring of fire country like Indonesia. As the sun sets in Serpong, light bulbs slowly turn night into day. Electricity, urban dwellers take it for granted. But just an hour away from the capital, Jakarta, access to electricity is not a given. There are around 12.6 million households who currently have no access to public electricity. In uh, our calculation, if we are including such as the solar in this country, we're talking about the geothermal, about the coal, and about the uh, so micro hydro. Uh, there is still, still uh, the lack of uh, electricity. That's why, in our opinions, uh, like or dislike, nuclear must be included for the demand of electricity until 2025. Indonesia, the largest economy in Southeast Asia, spans more than 17,000 islands. It has to ensure reliable, sustainable and affordable supply of electricity for 250 million people spread across this archipelagic nation. About 35 million people, or 16% of the nation's population, continue to lack access to electricity. Indonesia's National Nuclear Agency, Batan, was established in 1958 to conduct research and development in the field of nuclear energy for civilian use. In May 2015, Indonesian President Joko Widodo launched a 35 gigawatt power development program to be realized by 2019. All part of the country's efforts to be less dependent on fossil fuels and stay on track with Indonesia's 2025 energy mix plan. Nuclear power makes only 2% of the total energy supply out of 35 gigawatts. If you look at the history of nuclear uh, programs in Indonesia, early 1970s, there was a serious effort that was taken by the government to implement the construction of nuclear power plants. But for the next 20 years, this uh, plant was never materialized due to the uh, politics of oil in Indonesia during the New Order regime. He documented the 2007 controversy and failure of the proposed construction of a nuclear power plant in Muria, in Japara, central Java. Strong anti-nuclear protests in Jakarta and across the Muria Peninsula delayed Batan's plan to build a nuclear power plant in Muria. There is no argument to build nuclear power plant in Indonesia valid for us because nuclear is not safe, nuclear is not clean, nuclear, nuclear is a false solution for climate change, nuclear not will support us to achieve our energy sovereignty. So we don't need nuclear, not at all. After Inobatan you know, was uh, uh, frustrated with you know, Maria and the people in Japara, they decided to find another location. And Bangka, uh, the Bangka province, was keen to develop nuclear power plants due to the lack of electricity in the island. And that you know, resonates with the interest of Batan to have this nuclear power plant built in that location. I think Batan and other nuclear promoter choose a strategy because the, the only reason why they fail to build nuclear uh, power plant in those area because of strong local opposition, because they, don't, uh, they didn't get public acceptance, and that's why they choose the area with the electricity problem in Indonesia. 
we know that Bangka Belitung uh, had uh, electricity issues, electricity supply issues. Batan's feasibility studies declared Muntok West Bangka and Permis South Bangka suitable for the construction of a nuclear power plant. To demonstrate their technical readiness, Batan has built and operated three nuclear research reactors to date. So this is a big research reactor we have. This was started in 1987. It is also the fact that because some people don't believe that we are not able to operate to maintain the research reactor, in the fact, the application of research reactor is really one of the thing is to produce radioisotope production. The radioisotope production can be used not only for the uh, agriculture, not only for health, not only for industry, but other purposes. In this area, we have research reactor, also we have safety laboratory. So we have the waste treatment center, and also we have here the nuclear fuel center here. So, I mean, everything is complete. Nuclear power has been included in the national energy scenario, but to turn the nuclear dream into reality requires the coming together of multiple stakeholders. We make regulation about the nuclear application and then we license. So every nuclear application must have a license from Papaten in Indonesia, I mean. And also not only the apparatus, not only the device, but also the people who operate the device must have a license from Papaten. The role of Indonesia's nuclear regulatory agency, Papaten, is to ensure adequate safety, security and safeguard measures. They are regularly reviewed by the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Recently, in August 2015, we had an integrated regulatory review service mission by the IAEA. And one of them is uh, our capability, our readiness to, to license a new nuclear power plant. And it, uh, the conclusion is we, we are ready. We... Uh, when I met to the president, uh, I say, Mr. President, the position of Bhattan is to follow the order of the government policy. If we want to construct the NPP, it's okay. If not, it's okay also. Because we are not the policy maker for the energy. If the government say yes, we are ready. Well, was Japan ready when they built in Fukushima Daiichi in 1970s? Were they ready, were the Japanese ready with what happens in 2011, right? The unprecedented Fukushima nuclear accident, which a scathing Japanese parliamentary report described as a profoundly man-made disaster, has not phased the Indonesians. The country remains steadfast. Its course to start constructing its first nuclear power plant in 2020. But is it all worth it? Indonesia, a huge archipelago, sits on the most active part of the Pacific Ring of Fire and is consistently prone to earthquakes and tsunamis. With plans for a nuclear power plant to be built, it goes without saying, it has prompted safety concerns ASEAN-wide. Well, we say we, are, we live in the Ring of Fire. The fact is no. Some of part of Indonesia not in the Ring of Fire. Not every part of Indonesia is in, in the ring of fire. Uh, Bangka, Belitung, people have done. I mean, in fact, it, it was done by Batan. Uh, it is uh, a good site for nuclear power plant. Uh, mostly the area is, uh, is granite and it's, it's not in the ring of fi fire. Uh, and also West Kalimantan, is Kalimantan. They use the argument that Kalimantan is safe from earthquake. Kalimantan is not vulnerable to natural disaster. Always say that. When they keep use that argument, big earthquake occurred in East Kalimantan, right in the proposed site of nuclear power plant. In Indonesia, contrary to what the IAEA prescribes, there is no nuclear energy implementing organization to lead and manage the effort 
to consider and develop a nuclear power plant program. Indonesia should uh, reconsider pursuing nuclear energy because of the lack of uh, capacity in dealing with the risk. However, momentum is building in the capital, Jakarta, as leaders from the international nuclear power industry meet to discuss nuclear power development across Southeast Asia. I do think uh, Southeast Asia is ready for nuclear energy and what I also learn is that people are supportive and interested and understand that this is important when it comes to uh, combating climate change. The IAEA does not certify any country as being fit or unfit for nuclear power. Nor does it ascertain whether a nuclear power plant is being operated safely. Both are responsibilities of national regulators. The role of IAEA is to provide support to the development of expertise in member states for their own nuclear power program. But the IAEA does not influence the sovereign decisions of its member states on whether to use nuclear power. Indonesia invited IAEA to review the status of infrastructure development in 2009. And based upon our reviews of Indonesian readiness, we, we made up, we reported recommendations and suggestions to Indonesian government to make further actions for their nuclear power program. And it's Indonesian government's decision when and how to implement those action plans. It is the total responsibility of the one who operates the plant to operate it safely. The licensee has to operate the plant safely. And then the oversight is done by the regulator. So these are the, the structure that should be in place in every country that operates nuclear power plants. Rosatom, a Russian state atomic energy corporation which builds nuclear power plants, has set up a regional office in Singapore with a focus on expanding in Southeast Asia. A philosophy that we call the conscious vendor, that means that we should uh, be with the country and be with the utility uh, and the, with the regu regulator all the way through the process uh, by helping uh, develop uh, human resources to ensure the safe and reliable operation of a nuclear power plant. Always the anti-nuclear movement asks me, we are not ready, we don't have any human resources, we don't have enough of that. I say that we have 40 years history nuclear energy program. Nuclear energy has been touted as a clean form of energy because it doesn't emit CO2 emissions. But there is a concern of waste management. If we are talking about nuclear, we are talking about the radioactive waste. And until now, even the most advanced countries with the nuclear technology, like Germany or US, they still cannot maintain the nuclear waste, the radioactive waste from their uh, nuclear power plant. You need to look at very every energy source but from, from the cradle to the grave. That means from the mining to building the, the, the facility, operate the facility and close down the facility to take care of the waste and do the decommissioning. If you do that for every energy source and look at what type of emissions are there, nuclear is one of the best with the lowest emissions of all. We have to separate uh, nuclear radioactive waste and spent nuclear fuel. Spent nuclear fuel from reactor after it's been used is actually a, a viable source of um, producing more fuel that can be reprocessed. Currently in Indonesia, Batan is the only agency tasked with treating nuclear waste from across the country. They already have a waste treatment facility. Waste storage still remains a critical issue. Since radioactivity from nuclear waste takes about a thousand years to decay. So you, you, you must remember that Indonesia is a lot of thousands of islands. So, so many empty islands here. We can find some empty island to find or to build for the nuclear waste over there. So we don't need to worry about the where we can put the nuclear waste one time if to keep our plan be built here. Uh, France is dealing with a huge problem of nuclear waste. Finland and Japan, now, uh, Japan's nuclear waste now is piling up. 
the U.S. you know has been dealing with this problem. They, they keep moving from one place to another. So, do you think there's a pro that, that's a solution now? I don't. I don't see. I, I haven't seen any, you know, good solution. Waste management remains a huge challenge even for developed countries. The Finnish authorities have issued a license for the construction of a deep geological repository expected to be operational in 2023. This will be the first repository in the world for the permanent disposal of spent nuclear fuel. We can see now that Finland has got to go ahead to uh, to make its uh, final repository for the spent fuel, which is the most high, highly radioactive uh, waste. And uh, Sweden is going the same way, and then other countries will follow. So it's not that there is no solutions. There are very good solutions how to deal with the waste. Batan and Bapaten say they have sufficient human resources and the right solutions in place to tackle the waste management problem. But will the Indonesian public be ready to accept such a nuclear power plant? Indonesia is on course to construct its first 10 megawatt experimental power reactor in Serpong. What needs to happen next? A presidential approval. We cannot postpone because we must see the need of electricity in the following 10 years. It's very important. Local industry should be improved. People will be improved. Economic growth must be improved. So we need a lot of electricity. If the political decision and the decision is made in Southeast Asia to go nuclear, uh, are going to be the most, uh, the, the safest, the most advanced nuclear power plant available on the market today. What left is now the president decision. It's only the president. If, if, if Mr. Joko Widodo said we go nuclear, then uh, we will have nuclear power plant. Yeah, but at the moment it's, it's rest to the president. We, we, we can't do anything. And I, as a regulatory body, we are, we, we take a passive role. If, uh, if there is no application, then what can we do? But what about the voice of the people? Where do they stand on the nuclear dream for Indonesia? The narrow mindset of the bureaucrats and the technocrats who insist that nuclear energy must be implemented in Indonesia. And this narrow mindset does not leave a space for public participation to engage and to give feedback. We don't need to worry about the public acceptance because based on the survey in the last two years, say in the 2014, 2015. So the survey we made for 4,000 responders, it's really is amazing because 2014, something like 72% people agree with Nuki power plant in this country. And in the last survey done in November 2015, 75.3% agreed that the people agree to build nuclear power in this country. And now you get this button doing survey about nuclear power. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Do you think it's it's you know it's reliable? You know what what is the methodology they use? What, what are the questions they ask during the survey? They should open it up so we can see whether it's reliable or not. I think the first thing that I have to to inform to everyone that this is not directly uh, conducted by Batan. We request to the independent organization to conduct that kind of survey. It's, so they, they are free. Their methodology, as long as they, it's, it's good. Batan used public money, our uh, government budget, to conduct this kind of promotion for nuclear. This is, uh, for us, a uh, nuclear propaganda. So instead of wasting money to this kind of uh, propaganda, Batan should use uh, government budget, our public money, for research, for uh, research and development. Batan can be a renewable energy agency as well. Nuclear medicine is a branch of medical imaging that uses small doses of radioactive isotopes to diagnose or to treat various diseases 
which include many types of cancers. The government should educate people first before they put plans to, I don't know, maybe to uh, build a nuclear plant or to, to do a research in nuclear fields, but the community in Indonesia needs more education about what is nuclear, what is a safety nuclear, what is the benefit of using nuclear, so people could understand and open the, their minds to accept the idea of anything connection with the nuclear terms. There is a fun unit of measurements of radioactivity called the banana index. So if you, yeah, because bananas are very rich in potassium, uh, and for particular potassium-40, which is a radioactive isotope, uh, when you eat a banana, uh, you consume about, I think, 0 0.1 millisievert of radio radioactivity. So let's say you go and get a CAT scan, right? Uh, that would be equal to eating about 70,000 bananas in terms of how much radioactivity you get. So if you have a nuclear power plant in operation, normally operating, of course, without any accidents, the legal amount of radioactivity that can be released in, in, any, in any case is about uh, 2,500 bananas. So 70,000 bananas for just going to a doctor, 2,500 bananas for the, uh, for the nuclear power plant. The government should push uh, renewable energy development in Indonesia. We have abundant resources of renewable energy, but it is quite uh, pity that currently we only uh, use uh, around 5% of renewable energy in our energy mix. I think the renewables will have an, its place in the energy mix, but substituting the, the large-scale uh, nuclear power plant that provides the base load, the generating capability with uh, no CO2 emission and no exposure to, let's say, uh, fuel price volatility, uh, substituting that with renewable is, as of today, not possible. Despite the push for wind and solar farms in the ASEAN region, Indonesia, along with Thailand, Vietnam and Malaysia, are all looking seriously towards nuclear as part of the renewable and new energy mix. I think the first one to build nuclear power plant in ASEAN countries would be Vietnam, uh, due to the fact that there is an intergovernmental uh, agreement between uh, Vietnam and Russia on construction of nuclear power plants. So. Well, I think it is a very long journey since 1950s, 1960s, and I don't think it's going to end very soon. So they will keep trying to build at least one nuclear power plant. So it's going, yeah, we're going to see it happening. The demand for electricity across Southeast Asia is not going to go anywhere else but up. With population growth and mega cities sprouting, Ensuring the poor will have access to electricity, the energy for all mantra will be every government's challenge and Indonesia knows this well. But if countries like Indonesia are to wean themselves away from fossil fuels, then nuclear as part of the energy mix, that's what the pro-nuclear voices are saying it will be. Question is, are Indonesians and the rest of Southeast Asia ready to live side by side with nuclear while charging and enjoying all that the nuclear affair promises. Indonesia kan juga dia negara yang belum maju banget. Kalau misalnya punya nuklir pastinya juga bakal kayak suatu bikin negara-negara lain bahwa enggak bakal ngelihat sebelah mata kalau Indonesia tuh punya nuklir gitu. Kebanyakan orang kalau bicara tentang nuklir itu pasti mendekat ini berpikir tentang bom, ledakan perang sesuatu yang bad gitu ya sesuatu yang kurang baik saya tidak setuju karena bisa berbahaya untuk masyarakat sekitar energi pembangkit listrik dengan nuklir itu dibutuhkan terutama di daerah-daerah tertinggal ya di pelosok-pelosok sana yang saat kekurangan pasokan listrik tapi yang jelas pembangunannya harus memperhatikan keberlanjutan lingkungan gitu.